and a former federal prosecutor, Nima Romani. He's joining us from Los Angeles, California. Nima, great to have you on the show tonight. Uh, a lot to get into here. First and foremost, I want to get your reaction uh, to the sentencing of Kim Potter today. Michael, it was a miscarriage of justice. Mm. There's no other way to put it. You know, we're talking about a two-year yeah. sentence for a police officer who killed a man. And I understand that she was remorseful, and I understand that she has no criminal history, but this is someone who didn't accept responsibility, pushed her case to trial, as is her constitutional right to do so, took the stand and testified, and the jury rejected her testimony, convicting her on both first and second degree manslaughter. And the Muhammad Noor case is illustrative and a great example. The whole reason we have sentencing guidelines is to avoid unwarranted sentencing disparities. He was of course first convicted of third degree murder, got 12 and a half years in that case. Obviously him being the first police officer convicted of murder in the state of Minnesota, a black police officer. And ultimately when that third degree murder charge was overturned on appeal, and he was resentenced on manslaughter, Michael, he got 57 months. So with time served and credit for good time, Kim Potter is going to be out in 14 months, a little more than a year in prison yeah. for killing another human being. Just yes. unconscionable. She could be out by April of next year, Nima. And you know what I've been calling it? As I listen to the judge speak, I'm calling it um, uh, judge nullification rather than jury nullification. Because what the judge did, as she's explaining why she was going to depart downward from the guidelines, was basically take into account everything that the prosecution presented to this jury as the reason why they should convict her on this reckless gun charge, this manslaughter charge. Because she was a police officer. And that, to me, makes it a more serious crime than a less serious crime. The fact that she went into a difficult situation, these are the people we entrust with guns and badges to deal with difficult situations, yet she used that again as a reason for a downward departure, that it was a fluid situation and difficult. So I, I think the, the judge was basically telling this jury, I don't agree with your verdict. If she were a juror, Nima, I think she would have found her not guilty. I think so, Michael. And everything you talked about, those are aggravating factors. Those are yes. Blakely factors. The prosecution filed these. This is misuse of her authority, creating a very dangerous situation. But the prosecution didn't choose to ask for an enhancement. They just asked for a guideline sentence, the presumptive sentence of seven years. That would have been fair. That would have been appropriate. That's why we have these guidelines. That's what legislatures do. And instead, you have a white female police officer that did did the right thing apparently at sentencing and convinced this judge either through sympathy or through like you said through judge nullification that she should have been prosecuted in the first place yeah that's what it felt like to me and she said throughout this trial this is judge Chu, that she was going to treat this trial like any other trial she wasn't going to treat it differently and then it comes to sentencing she treats it completely differently citing the whole idea that she's a police officer it just didn't make any sense to me let me ask you about that that move by prosecutors the day before that a motion comes out that they're no longer seeking enhancement they were fine with seven years included in that motion which i read was a whole section as to why they think that they didn't think probation was correct but if she decided on probation here were all the positive things that could come from that i had never seen anything like it before here's my thought and i want to get your thought because you have tons more experience than i have maybe they got wind of what the judge might be doing and they did that to sort of cut some of the sting from what was coming I, I, why would they do that why would they do that the day before sentencing well, Judge True has received a lot of criticism. Let's not forget, she originally opposed even televising this trial, and it was a subject of litigation forcing her hand. So I think the prosecution got wind that this is a very pro-law enforcement judge and that she was likely going to depart downward. The defense asked for probation, and there was a real possibility that they might have actually even gotten probation. So. That's why they said, look, there's no way we're going to get an upper enhancement. And these are the same prosecutors who prosecuted Derek Chauvin. So they know what they're doing. And they got from 15 years in that case to 22 and a half. They said, look, there's no way that's going to be a possibility with this particular judge. This is no Peter Cahill. So let's just try to take the sting out of it and try to get something close to that seven years, maybe even six years on the low end. But to depart all the way down to two years and give her a fraction of the time, really 
It just blows my mind, Michael. Just mind-boggling stuff, Nima. I'm with you 100%.